that are inside of him. And by the time the demon were expelled, guess what? 2,000 demons. One demon can raise down a state. One demon. Now you have 2,000 of it living in one vessel. You can imagine how devastating that guy can be. The Bible said day and night he cries in the midst of the cemetery and tearing his own flesh with stones. Why will he not tear with his with, with stone because he is not the creator of that body. He's not the one who makes that body. Satan does not care what you lose as long as he's having, having hold on your business, having hold on your body, having hold on your life. He doesn't care. This is the time you need to wake up and say, Lord, I want to be in touch with real life. And Jesus is the true life. Jesus is life. God wants your comfort. God wants your peace. But the truth of the matter is that there can be no peace in any nation without war first. Is somebody hearing me? The truth of the matter is not too many Christians want to fight for their destiny. They don't want to fight for their life. We're in the mess we are today in Nigeria because everybody is trying to train the gentle pass. Nobody wants to fight. Nobody wants to take their place. And that is the reason why we continue to remain subject to lies and to all kinds of strange leaders. Are you hearing me? As long as Christians sit back, as long as the old world sit back, the everybody sit back, the devil continue to make choice for you. You can only get average, you can't get best, except God step into the sin. Am I making sense to somebody? Whoever is going to take over, whoever has been is there before, whoever I listen to me, they are all human beings, and as long as they don't know God, they can be instrument in the hand of the devil. And guess who loses the grass? where two elephants fight the grass, the masses and that is why I have come to a conclusion that beloved the time has come and now we are in it that everyone must get to understand that I need to know this God personally because we have got to that point you must know God personally for they that do know their God they are the one that what do exploit they will be strong financially strong materially strong mentally and they will do exploit because of what they know God that song says I know God I know God I know God oh my God knows me you must live your life and run your life take your life to a point that you know God you see when you know God to a certain level nothing entices you nobody can deceive you you can be earning millions and you are not happy. And yet we are people who are earning in hundreds of thousands, maybe 50,000, and they are super happy. Listen to me. The Bible says the abundance, a man's life does not consist in the abundance of the things that he possess. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of the things that he possess. That you are building, you have houses, you have this, you have connections. We still see people that are still naked in their home, in their houses, in their family. A young lady story very pathetic. Got married to a wonderful man, very wealthy man, not far away, not in Dubai, in Nigeria here, precisely even around Lekki. I can just not tell you the street. Amen. Amen. Everything you can think of is in that house. And you can agree with me there are houses like that. You you see the, some house, you think you are in heaven. Are you listening to me? But the friend came to visit and met their wonderful friend, this supposed friend that is considered to be in heaven on earth, weeping and crying. What is the problem? He said, I'm just in this house. I'm not happy. Wow. But your wedding was splendid. It was great. Forget about that. I'm empty. I'm alone. Uh -uh. Where about you? are married. Where's your husband? He said, if it's not in Dubai today, it's in Malaysia tomorrow. If it's not in Malaysia, it's in Germany next week. Doesn't he give you money? Come on, money is not like it. Was that not what you were telling us that you are going to be in money? But now you are in money, but you are not in life. Am I making sense to somebody? Because sometimes we take advice from people who don't even think about the consequence. Listen to me, anybody can tell you anything, but they have no power to know tomorrow. They have no power to tell you what is going to evolve thereafter. They can only suggest and probably permutate and tell you maybe after this and this and this will probably, you know, you enjoyed it, you enjoyed that. How sure are they? Is somebody hearing me? 
But you can take on on the word of God, look at look at the train, and know where it's going to lead you. You can't hold on to God's word and not be assured of your destination. In Mark chapter number five, because. Do you know a lot of people? A lot of people are obsessed. Like I mentioned, if you are born again, you're Holy Ghost filled. Number one, you can't be you can't be evil spirit possessed. The spirit of God lives in you. The demon can't dig there. But if you become so weak, so lethargic in your walk with God, what the devil does is that he oppresses you, he depresses you, he, obs- he obsesses you. There is what they call obsession, and there is what they, there is what they call depression, and there is what they call oppression, which is different from demon possession. Are you getting it? You just get obsessed unnecessarily with certain things. They cannot detach you from television. They can't detach you from a particular person. Even though you are married, you are still obsessed with another person. I do understand. Obsession. Some people are so obsessed with food. They are so obsessed. They can't just separate themselves. And some people, every night, there is no way they sleep that something comes to oppress them. They just feel heavy. They can't pray. Some are traveling around depressed. They are never happy. Yet they are born again speaking in tongues. So those are the operations of the demons over Christians sometimes. Even though they are born again. The devil knows they can't touch your spirit. They cannot possess you because you are Holy Ghost filled. But because you are not giving power to the gift of God that is on your inside. There is one thing to be Holy Ghost filled. It's another thing to be empowered. Because he said when the spirit of truth comes. Not only that it will fill you up. He said you should also pray for a baptism of fire. There is difference between speaking in tongues and speaking in fire. Listen to me. It doesn't matter how anointed you are. It doesn't matter how gifted you are. It doesn't matter how how grace you are and how skillful you are. It doesn't matter how intelligent you are. If the fire dimension of life is not added to your life, that gift will have no voice. Are you not surprised that somebody is not doing up to what you are doing and is everywhere? Everybody is is celebrating him. Do you know now, the difference is that one carries fire, one carries emptiness. Even though we know that this is there. Sometimes you ask yourself, I've been in this business for a while. How come this guy just came little, just without distance time, and the guy is already making waves. If, he's, if he has not bowed to the devil, he has bowed to God. If he has not contacted concussion, if he has not a supernatural aid, either from the devil or from God, God. Nobody because Satan has no free gift. I told you. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter number 4 verse number 4 it said in whom the gods of this world has blinded the minds of many that believe not least the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God should shine on their minds so it takes over their lives. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. You may see people walking on the road. You may see people that they are looking fresh. They dress, they are looking good. But what is going on? You see a lot of people on the planet are everybody moving from error to error, just permutating life. And to make matter worse, we seek we seek redress, we seek answer from people who know next to nothing in the spirit things. We go to friends to for counseling. What do they know? You leave your pastor, you leave a spiritual counselor, and you go to friends. You say this guy prays very well. Does he have the anointing to actually carry out that divine assignment? Somebody can advise you. Fine, it's good. Friend can pray along with you. Yokes can be broken when you meet with anointed people. But the truth of the matter is that it is the results that defines and also confirm to us if truly you have met with anointing. Hallelujah. He said, For we wrestle not with flesh and blood. We wrestle not with flesh and blood. Please get to know that this life is more spiritual than you think of it. In your field of endeavor, in your place of work, there are things you don't know. So you must please understand how to handle that. Now, Mark chapter 5. Let me quickly put this in your hand. And I close this first service. Then get set for the second service. Mark chapter 5. Are you there? Verse. Let's start from verse 2. Let's read verse 2. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs 
a man with an unclean spirit. Verse 8. Verse 8. Go to verse 8. I've already read all this last week. I don't want, I want to jump. But he said unto him, Come out of the man, that unclean spirit. Move to verse 15. Verse 15 now. Shall we read it together? And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. And they were free. This was a man that everybody has written of. Abandoned to the graveside. Nobody would think of giving that kind of person a woman to marry. Nobody would think of employing that kind of person. Nobody would think this person's life can ever be better. His destiny is completely abandoned and the whole world has turned their back to him. But just an encounter with Jesus changed the whole story. And that is what I want you to please set your mind on. Are you listening to me? Now, I talked last week about steps to take in personal deliverance because some people don't know that they, 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 they need this deliverance. You know, when we mention deliverance, some people immediately we probably, our mind goes straight to unbelievers, to people on the street, maybe to people that are there. Let me explain some manifestations that demands that somebody needs deliverance. Number one, if you have chains of debt, you are always owing. There is a stranger having on for years. Certain things must happen and it's not good. <laughs> if you have some an encounter in the dream, most of the time it's always coming. It's always coming. Either oppression, maybe somebody sleeping with you, maybe you are just always eating in the dream. Who told you? You may wake up and be speaking in tongues, but you, are, you need deliverance. What are we talking about? Somebody said every time, he noticed that every time he's moving, just from nowhere, on the main road, you just see cobwebs. You'll be wiping it off. We'll be wiping it off. You know, when we were growing up, we like to wish it away because we just believe that these are one of those things. But this thing persists. This is continuous. Now, I said, look, you don't just seek, get a job, and you see all of these things there. It's manifesting. Praise God. Now, sometimes you, you just discover that there is a pattern that nobody can reverse. It's in the family. Yet, you are speaking in tongues. Yes, you come to church. But why can't I, I can't, why can't I stop this? Are you the kind of person that it doesn't matter how full you are, you still feel like eating? That spirit of gluten. It's a spirit. It's a sp Somebody will teach others in the exam. He will teach others, but he will fail the same exam. How do you explain that? Very beautiful. Very, very beautiful. But guys pass by you and go to somebody that's not even as beautiful as you are. And to make matter worse, he doesn't even come to church regularly the way you come. Am I making sense to somebody? We have, we have had stories of people that the moment the pregnancy is three months, four months, that is a challenge. That is a force we need to deal with. Please let us understand how this thing operates. The devil will always wants us to just believe he's one of those things. Who told you that? Nothing just happened. The Bible says, God takes note of even a leaf that drops from a tree. God said those trees cannot drop without the knowledge of God. No tree, no leaves can drop from a tree. How much more about you? He said, God can be so concerned about the sparrow. He said, how much is a sparrow being sold? Two are sold for a father. Two sparrows. That is how bad the price, the destiny of a sparrow is. Two of them is even a father. Not even one. Do you understand? Now, if God can be that concerned for a sparrow, he's concerned for, about you. When there is a chronic disease that always reoccurring in a life, and the, each time it shows up until you finish all your resources, it doesn't go. That is a demon oppression. You may not be possessed, but that oppression is there. A channel to continue to siphon your energy or finances away is there planted. Who is going to deal with this? Why is it that it is only when it is your turn they say that it's finished? They say that, look, sorry, we, 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 we just have to put a stop to you. We'll come next, we'll come next and when we're, when we're next, we're ready, we'll just call on you. And they never did. Why is it that when a result comes out, they are, your name is always omitted from something that is good? Excuse me, sir. Don't be deceived. We are such in a generation where many people no longer have respect for spirituality. And Satan is happy. He's happy. He's, 
His, his mission is to ensure you continue to ignore what is going to turn your life around. Begin to pay attention to all of these things. Except if it doesn't happen. But if it does, you'll be you'll be you'll be you'll be you'll be you'll be you'll be, you'll be, you'll be, you'll be a fool not to observe and acknowledge that this thing is there and I need to fight it. I told you of my life when I was growing up, and I said each time I sleep, I just say I wake up, I see ah, this thing is not once or not twice. So I will just see one part of my hair scraped. Yes, I was going to church, I gave my life to Christ. But I knew at that time that it's different between speaking in tongues and speaking in fire. Amen. But God stepped in. Over the years, I've gathered some information. If God can deliver me, He can deliver anybody. You know, sometimes people take pride in keeping secrets so that you can come to them. By the grace of God in this church, I try to open your eyes to see this is what I do. Go and practice it. But the problem is that not too many people, we like to take notes, but how many people actually are taking action? We write notes, but are you taking action at all? I'm trying to divert secrets to you so that you will take the bull by the horn. I said, now, the first step for personal total deliverance, when I say total, not partial, total deliverance, you must be delivered maritally, financially, spiritually. You understand? You must be delivered mentally. You must be sane. Nobody can coerce you. You understand? You know what is right and you know what is God. And you are following, and you are seeing God's manifestation in your life. And I told you last week, I gave you one. I said the first step is what? You just have to know God. Be born again. When I say be born again, not just mere words. You are consciously born again. You have denounced the things of the world. You become a wife to God. You become married to Christ. That is what it demands from you. Because some of us, what we do in Zion is to visit. God expects you to dwell there. In Psalm 91 verse number 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. They are the ones that will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. When we talk about shadow of God Almighty, we are talking about the place, the safest place anybody can find himself on earth. Not no visible, but real. If I stand anywhere now, I tell you, I cannot be attacked. It doesn't matter how many witches are there. You may be thinking, what does he have? Does he have one canopy? It's there, but you can't see it. It's there, you can't see it. That is the same thing for you, every child of God. Have you not heard what he said? He said, behold, he will give his angels charge over thee. To keep you in all your ways, so that you will not dash your feet against the stone. Do you think God is a liar? God has no business in telling lies. As a matter of fact, even if everyone said this rest, uh, this chair cover is blue, the moment God opened his mouth and said this is red, it turns red automatically. That is God for you. Praise God. Listen to me, your life is too interesting to God for him to allow you to leave it to chance. He brought you here for total transformation. And I told you last week, the first step to total deliverance is to what? To come into a covenant with him. I think I established that. Number two, identify the spirit behind the problem. Is it the spirit of poverty? Why is it that every time I'm always begging the spirit of poverty? Identify the spirit. Some is the spirit of barrenness. Some is the spirit of oppression. I'm always oppressed. That is the spirit behind it. Just, you must identify the spirit because you know it doesn't matter how in a hurry you are. It is in the medical practice. It doesn't matter. You know sometimes when people that are not, you know, that educated, when they get to the hospital, they'll just be screaming and yelling on the doctor. No doctor will administer drug to you without first of all doing a test. They call it diagnosis to discover the nature of your problem. Is that not correct? It doesn't matter how in a hurry. Yeah, he's going to die. He's going to die. They will do tests before they can administer drug. Is that not correct? They have to identify what spirit. You know, we are we, we don't understand this the meaning of this. You first of all need to understand what exactly is wrong with me. What is the trend? What kind of a thing that I'm seeing behind this in this family, in my life, in my business? Customer will come, go. Customer will come, go. Ah. Customer will come. Somebody I want to postpone and to want to marry me will come, go. 
this is spirit of miscarriage of opportunity at the edge of breakthrough. So you already identify a prayer. Are you getting it? So you know what to attack. Don't just pray general prayer. Can somebody just come to the hospital and say, this is what I'm feeling. The doctor said, the, the, the family said, go and have you done tests? He said, I've not done anything. I, just, I know when things like this come, come. Just, just give me Panadol. Give me this one. Give me this one. Put it together. Don't worry. For what? He said, don't worry. That's how I normally take it. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. That is the problem. Hallelujah. You don't just just don't just jump, don't, don't just bounce into a prayer and just begin to no, you won't get answer. Do you really know what you're attacking? Don't fight. Paul said when we fight, we are not among those. He said, he said I don't pray, I don't fight as well. Who beats the air? I've, 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 I've been able to identify what is wrong and I attack it. Praise God. So what exactly is wrong? What is behind the matter? Why is what is the spirit that is making my husband or my wife to behave this way? I think I've seen that this woman is beginning to what? To lust after women. So you see that adultery is hanging around. So you know what to attack. When you mention you that foul spirit of adultery, he knows that you are seeing him. Because Satan likes to hide. Are you listening to me? When you see that you have a child that is, he can eat seven times in a day. He said, this is gluttony. Come. Come. Likatara diaketo. Till this afternoon, we are praying till twelve. Until twelve, before you take breakfast, do it for seven days. That spirit will leave. I'm serious. When you notice that customer will come, price things, drop your things, price things, drop your things. Come to that your shop. Begin to attack that spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you fast spirit sitting, standing here, chasing customer away from me. The time is up. Do it for seven days. You see that the next set of people that will come, they will be buying, they will be coming and be buying. You must understand. Take the pain to identify. Don't wish things away. You have a child that is always, you know, you carry face from the back. You know what that means? Carry face from the back. Always face from the back. And you are investing, you are paying school fees. You don't know that that is a shade. Amen. You don't know that is a waste. You just say, now nah, me and you today, as you employ teacher for the person, you also employ yourself as prayer, prayer warrior for the person. This your brain must open up. Everything God created, He created and He made them good. You don't come, He didn't come to this planet with bad brain. The Holy Ghost breathed upon you and He breathed upon them and they became great. Likoshi diagaza, di koporono shitia. Every day anoint that head. Seven days as the teacher come, do his own work. Make sure he's there. Shut down every television, every distraction, and make sure that for seven days he doesn't eat until he finishes his assignment. There will be transformation, but we are too careless and look at things. God will help you. Every day somebody identify the spirit behind it and attack it, because. The most insensitive battle anybody can fight is for you not to know what you are fighting. The most dangerous battle anybody can contend with or to engage in is for you not to know what you are targeting. What is making you to lose opportunity? What is making uh, bless, uh, uh, people to promise you and never fulfill it? The spirit behind this promise and faith. Praise God. Miscarriage is a spirit. Are you getting it? Poverty, begging is a spirit. I've been young and now, oh, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaking no seed beg bread. That is a bullet you can hold in your hand and use it against that devil. Praise God. The number three step is to confront, because it's not enough to identify, confront and cast it out. You know, sometimes some people after being administered to, they not tell you this is the drug to buy, this is the test, this is the result of the test, then go and buy this, go and buy this. You say, ah, this is too expensive. I beg, I've had. I'll go, I'll go and find something to do with it. Listen to me, it doesn't take the sickness away, it doesn't take the virus discovered in you away. It's there until you attack it, cast it out. Confront it and cast it out. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Please, to cast out devil, sometimes you can confront, 
Sometimes it takes like three days fasting and praying exercise. Sometimes it takes like seven days prayer together with your family and deal with the force of air that is controlling that home. Are you getting it? If you must, many times people know what is wrong with the family, but they don't create time to organize prayers as family members to deal with issues. They don't create that everybody is too busy and yet you want things to change. You must consciously confront. You see, what you don't confront, you can't conquer. What you permit will persist. Consciously confronting. Now we have identified this. Run with our family. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You know, sometimes husband can be manipulated. Wife can be manipulated. You take authority over that manipulation wherever it's coming from. You have identified it. Uh -uh. Today you say this. Tomorrow you have changed your mind. Today you say this. Tomorrow you have... There is a manipulation comes somewhere. It's a spirit. Hallelujah. The next, after casting out that devil, because the Bible says he has given unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all about the paths of the enemies, and nothing shall be enemies of you. Luke 10 19. He also said to us in Mark chapter 16, he said, Behold, this sign shall follow them that believe that in my name they shall do what? They shall cast out devils. In whose name are you casting out the devils? In whose name are you casting out the devils? In my name they shall cast out. You just as a child of God in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth you that foul spirit manipulating the life of my wife manipulating my marriage your time is up in the name of Jesus I command your grip broken and I command you in Jesus name if you do that it can be three days it can be one day it can be seven days depending on how you have organized yourself that today now today do you understand when I gave my life to Christ, one of the things that propelled me to the closet in many years ago that I will be praying, you know, is because I was tired of what I'm seeing in the family. I looked at this at my that young age. The Holy Spirit just opened my eyes and look, if we continue like this, nobody will make it to. I can't really point to anybody who has bought a bicycle at that time. I'm serious. Not that this one came back home with his bicycle. Say so, no, I know, no, this can't this can't continue. Every time we go to mosque, what we just shout is a little baptist, a little baptist, a little baptist, a little baptist. What kind of nonsense is that? I said, I can't my own son just I've been going there the day I gave on when I go but they don't go What kind of thing is this? I went one day and they are far carry blanla, you know blanla. In school they use bankara, they use cake. In the place where we go for Arabic school, it's Blala they use. Blala. You know Blala? That leather lozo. That once, and it's so long. Pyam! You will carry that mark for about two weeks. I'm serious. One day, I just got angry. The man think it. I heard it. I said, ah, what is this? What is this? In the morning, and I walked out of the mosque. I left. They reported me straight to my father. This your boy is stubborn. My daddy, there is nothing. He threatened me. Did he? At the end of the day, he dropped me out and I left. October 1989, I left. And I told my dad, if I would never sleep in this house again. If fully Christ is real, he will show up. Because my understanding just opened. What kind of darkness is this? I'm still saying, Laila, Laila. For a moment, one hour. That is for one chapter. You said almost like one life for one hour. Another chapter for another line for about two hours. I would they not know Quran often. They asked you to even retire John 3 16. Some of you will think really make a mistake. John 3 16. You see the church, you see the child of God will say, eh, Praise the God. Praise the as he's not used to it. Praise the God. Hallelujah. I'm, trying to, I'm just trying to incite you to tell you you have a better life to live in Christ. The Holy Ghost given to you was not cheap. The Spirit of God, Spirit of power. If you see the person of the Holy Spirit, you will bow. What we see is just fire that they left behind. The real person of the Holy Spirit, the, the person of the Holy Spirit, my goodness, is a glory that you cannot, you wouldn't want to leave your room. Please, because coming around you, you, see, you feel this kind of joy and this peace. I'm telling you, you just don't want to come out of it. I've experienced it 
about three times. Hey, you just don't want to come out of you. Be begging God, please. Are you hearing me? No wonder when David prays, they take not the joy of the Holy Spirit from me. I, I, it's just too much. It's an environment, but God will give you a taste. Because it's a lifestyle that everybody must cultivate. It shall be well with you. I say it shall be well with you. The next one I want to put in your hand is after casting him out, now sit down with the word of God. Say sit down with the word of God. Sit down with the word of God. The Bible says they found the man sitting after the devil is cast out. Why must you sit down? Because that is where transformation takes off. Then takes off. It's not enough to be delivered. A lot of Christians do not know that when somebody casts out a spirit from you, you pray, and the Almighty God, maybe in a hot service, the spirit left. You feel a difference in your body, in your life. It's not time to now jump on and begin I'm free. Just begin to play. Who told you that? Shem, let me show you a scripture. John, I mean, Matthew 12, verse 43 to 44. Matthew 12, verse 43 to 44. Shall we read? When the unclean spirit that Jesus cast out down is gone out of a man, he walketh about, I mean, through dry places, seeking rest, say seeking rest, and findeth none. How many of you know that even in the natural, looking for accommodation is not that easy? Abi, is it that easy? Even if you find, is it not money? Look at what, the same way the devil too needs accommodation. Then he said, I will return into my house, underline our house. He's a thief. He has seen you as a household. You see yourself as a human being. See, don't see you as his own house. I will return to my house only. When did he become his own? I will return to my house from whence I came out. Can you see? He has taken possession that this one is my own. My house. From whence I came out. And when he's come, he finded it empty, swept, and garnished because he was cast out. Unfortunately, the help, the people, the person that was helped did not help himself. Then he came back and filled the place. And the Bible said he will not stop there. He will come back with, go to the next verse. The, the next verse, what did he say? The next verse. Are you there in 45? Then he goes and take it with him. Seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. The meaning of that is that when you are delivered, when you cast out devil, after maybe intense prayer with your family, and you didn't sit down to begin to feed your spirit with the word of God. Meditation continues from there. Because it is the word that enters into you that not transforms you. What the word of God does is that it gives you a new mindset, how to think, how to live, what and what you should be doing and what you should not be doing. But many of us don't know the purpose. Why Jesus Christ took and commended Mary. He said, Martha, Martha, you are careful about too many things. But Mary has chosen that which is good. Which is what sitting at the feet of Jesus Christ and hearing and learning. Christians find it difficult to come for training. Find it difficult to come for teaching. Find it difficult to come to sit before God and read the Bible and meditate. Because God knows that you need to build up something in your spirit so that when the enemy comes, he will have no property of his end, of himself left inside of you. That is the next phase of deliverance that makes it total. Many of us became doctors today. Was it not because you came under the teaching of doctors in your university. Abi, many of us became engineer today in school after a few number of years. If they are pursuing you on the streets, hey, come to class, come and receive lecture. Will you ever become one? No. You submit yourself to him because you want to be something. Hey, in pursuing God, in coming to Christ, what exactly do you want to become? Now, if you come to submit to a doctor and you be eventually become a doctor after seven years, you submit to a, a real estate lecturer and after four or five years, you become a realtor. Is that not correct? Praise God. Now, what makes you think if you submit yourself, hearing from God, meditating on God's word, listening from servant of God, everything God is entering to you, that you are not going to become God. Do you understand? You say, ye are God's. I don't know if you are the children of the Most High. I laugh when people confess that scripture. I say, you don't do that. This thing is a process. That is why you speak, nothing is happening. For you to become a God, something enters into you. 
you call somebody a, an ordinary king, before he became Oba, he has eaten something. Before he became KBC, there is something he has swallowed. You are not there. It's in the closet. There are so many... For you to become a God and be able to dominate your world, take authority over forces of hell, sit down in the presence of the God that you claim you know and you believe. Let him enter into you. Then he releases you as God. <laughs> I hope you are in order. I hope what I'm teaching you are catching it. I'm telling you. Don't let anybody deceive you. You are the one that can help yourself. Sit in God's presence. Sweet on his word. Let him enter into you. No matter how busy you are, consciously allow the word of God to enter you. That is how transformation takes place. Now, in Romans chapter 12, verse 12, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. Romans 12, verse 1 to 2. Everybody read. I beseech you, brethren, by the message of God, that ye present, say present, make available. To present means make yourself available. Is that not correct? Make yourself available. A living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your, another version will tell you, which nobody should need to tell you to do. Well, your reasonable service. Do I need to tell you that you should need to present yourself before God? I want to teach you. You want to. You want me. To, you want to pass an exam. You don't come to class, and you are blaming lecturer that they fail you. Is it? Is it not a reasonable thing for you to attend classes? Why are we looking for what is not? Please, child of God, understand this principle. It doesn't matter how many people deceive you out there. If you come down from one lecture room to another lecture, go for one seminar, go for any make thousands of conference. If you don't know God, sitting down, starting the word of God, let the let the word enter into you. No transformation. What you will be reduced to is motivation. What you'll be reduced with was motivation. You'll you only be mentally sound. You'll be speaking grammar. But Satan will not understand. He said, Ukopo? Ukopo? No here. <laughs> Praise God. You have not seen where professors are slapped by demons? You know, with this equation, this equator coming from radius, can you click on Shut up! All the devil understands his power. Do you understand what I'm talking about? I'm not, this, is, this is not a motivation chart. This is a supernatural chart. I teach you God's word. I thank God for motivational speakers and I bless God for them. I read books on that, but I know what I extract from those. But I'm trying to tell you the ultimate of life is the Jesus entering to you. Now, the next verse, as we close, the next verse. And be not conformed, underline the word conform, to this word. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Listen to me. He takes somebody who has been transformed by the renewing of his mind to tell you this is what is acceptable. But today you find so many people that are not born again telling us what to do. We have so many people that don't even know anything about that telling us what to do. Because they say he's a professor. They say he's, what? Wait a minute. Please stop being foolish. Understand how things work in the kingdom. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. By the renewing of your what we grew up to know all this way has been things in the natural, but we have not been taught how to think like God, act like God, meditate like God, operate like God. In the natural, they will tell you revenge. I do me, I do you, but in the spiritual, God will say, Let go. It's a different thing. Somebody is owing you. The next thing is that you must charge a person. You must deal with the person and do this. But the person has begged you. I don't have. But you have to deal with the person. Do you understand? But in the spiritual world, it doesn't work that way. Am I making sense? So it will take us time for you to look at your wife who has offended you and you feel that I should, I should really show this guy, this lady, that I am the head of this house. In the kingdom, it doesn't work that way. If somebody has apologized, let go. Are you listening to me? In fact, in the second or third service, I'll be teaching you about the power of forgiveness. A lot of us don't know we are at standstill today because we don't, with the forgiveness we think we know, we don't know. I want to show you the mystery of self-forgiveness. Now, be it transformed. So transformation is of the mind. 
The reason they, you're going to school, they want to transform your mind. They want you to begin to think in a particular way. The reason you go for several seminars in your company is because they want you to begin to reason and think in a particular way. The same way, God also wants to transform you. He wants you to begin to reason and think like him. Such thing, that is where the road map to permanent deliverance. There are things you can never sell to me. I can listen to you, but it can't get to me because each time it's coming and it's contrary to the word of God that is on my inside, there will be a, a, there will be a reaction because something is there already. Now, anybody can carry your matter and take and table before anybody because the person is empty, he will easily absorb and become godly boom and say, no, that is how the person behaves. He's a very terrible man. We need to deal with him together. Am I making sense to somebody? Now, the next one, which is the final one, for to seal your deliverance, conformity to the word of God. The first one, be transformed. You need the word of God entrance to transform you. Then the next one, which is the last stage of deliverance, conformity. You force yourself to conform. To conform means that, look, if you have a glass cup, you have a glass cup here. Now, water can take any shape. Is that not correct? If I, if I want that water to come in a particular shape, I will get that shape of that plastic and put water in it, put it in the fridge. After a while, it becomes blocked. The same water that flows everywhere becomes like a cone. It can come in form of a cube. It can come in form of a circle because of the container I put it. What this word want to do to you, this word, Satan want to make everybody to be godless. Don't conform to this word because there is a shape already in this word and everybody is going in that direction. They can back it up with any kinds of, you know, points and ideologies. Beloved, I know better and wiser than Satan. Are you hearing me? Now, God also said, I have my own container. I want you to think like Jesus. I want to look like Jesus. Ah, for time, I won't be able to go deeper. Conform. What we conform you to think like God and look like God is when you begin to dwell in the word of God. Finally, stand to your feet. Isaiah 26, verse 2. He said, they will keep him in perfect peace. You cannot see the people. When people are troubled, no peace. No, no peace. And there is always constant trouble and challenges. Everybody reads Isaiah 20, 26, verse 3. He shall keep him in what? In perfect peace. Those who he said that will keep him in perfect peace. Those whose mind is what? Stay on thee because he trusted thee. Keep your mind on the word of God. People want you to react, they want you to fight. But what says the scripture? Let go. You are asking scripture, you are conforming. To conform me that you are obedient to what you read in the Bible. You are conforming. After two, three years, what will happen is that your life is shaped. It gets to a point, people say, ah, don't go and meet that man. He will never accept you. He, he doesn't take drive. He said, let's go and meet him. He, he, he will never support you for that. He won't take drive. Why? Over the year, you're already conformed. And no, no, that person, don't, don't involve him in that contract. He will not support us to do what we want to do. Say, why? He's conformed. Now, a conformed life to the will of God is that there is no amount of visitors that come to visit him. Once it's church time, he shuts his TV and is on his way to church. He said, what is wrong with you? You always church, 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 church. He's conformed. Am I making sense to somebody? No matter the pressure you put on that young man, he said, look, everybody comes from the village. This guy is good. This guy is good, but he's not born again. So now he's conformed to the word of God. He's only a child of God and a man. Sorry, mommy. Conformity. He said, conformity. He selects his friend. Conformed. No matter the pressure in the exam hall, because he has conformed to God's word, it doesn't matter how many people are cheating, and he has opportunities to, even if invigilator even advise you to cheat, he's conformed to God's word. I'm not in that class. Am I making sense to somebody? Conformity. Because of your conformity, it doesn't matter what everybody, anybody say out there. You cannot cheat God. You must pay your price. It's conformity. You know, tithing is a revelation. I've seen it. It's conformity. Is it not a shame that Christians are not debating tithes? It shows, you how, it shows how weak, it shows how light, it shows how far away we are from God. Have you ever seen a woman begging her husband before she can get money to eat? A true wife with a true husband? Does it make sense? In case you are not aware, I told you go and read the book of Ezekiel, chapter 16. The relationship between God and the church and the, his husband and wife relationship. Is it not the responsibility of the wife, of the husband to love the wife and the wife to submit? Is that not correct? Why will God begin to beg you to do what is expected of you to do? It's a shame. Sometimes I even look at it. Some even some so-called people that should even lead some people as I say is, they, they make mistake. That's tightening is. Do you understand? 
It's a shame that believers are not debating time. It's a shame. It's a shame. A shame. Shame. I'm t- I don't even know how to stand before God and say, hey, is it good for me to pay me? <laughs> okay, is it good for you to breathe? Is it good for you to breathe? Where is the oxygen coming from? Lift up your right and say, Father, thank you for sending your word. Hey, lift up your hand. Begin to thank him. Say, Father, thank you for sending your word. I, Lord, I release myself to be conformed to your word. I release myself to be totally conformed to your word, to your doing, to your word in the name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be. So shall it be. So shall it be. Put your right on your heart. Father, I release grace upon these sons and daughters of Zion. And I release the anointing of the Holy Spirit that as your word has come for today, in the name of Jesus, let this word do them good. I will say this word shall do you good. In the name of Jesus Christ. Put that same hand on your forehead. Father, any form of spirit tormenting this life, I bring and I cast it in the name of Jesus. Whatever influence that is manipulating your husband, your wife, whatever spirit tormenting your family, your marriage, your body, I bring and I cast it in the name of Jesus. I rebuke the spirit of infirmity. Command the light of God to shine upon your part. As we go from here, all I say to you, say to you, every day you must open your favor. I declare, let there be peace in your heart. Let there be joy in your heart. Let no peace open to you. Let grace multiply like never before. In the name of Jesus. And everyone watching this program online, whatever you are looking for, the very life of Christ is released upon you. Confession is destroyed. Oppression is broken. Obsession is stricken. Oppression is destroyed. In the name of Christ, I command the foul spirit tormenting your finances, tormenting your own, tormenting your business. In the name of Jesus Christ, of the devil is in charge of the thing. It is written as soon as the stranger shall hear my voice, the stranger shall obey me. He will tremble from fear because he will make himself to me. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I command the foul spirit of the devil to hear me. In this life, in this body, in the business, come on! So we're lucky to give or to take our title and offering. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I pray that the word would do us good and produce mighty testimonies in the name of Jesus. Even as we do, I pray that total deliverance will be our lot and our portion in Jesus' mighty name. Shall we package our worship offering? And for titles in the house, come to the front of the altar. Let's package our worship offering. If you are done packaging your offering, lift it up above your head. Let's titles come to the front of the altar. Father, we thank you for the privilege to give. We ask this morning that you accept this offering and accept us. Bless us, O Lord, and use it for the expansion and enlargement of your work. As we give this morning, Daddy, we, as we offer, may we not suffer. In the name of Jesus. Daddy, with this offering, Lord, let total deliverance be our portion. Deliver our business, deliver our finances, even from the grip of the enemy, in the name of Jesus. And for the titles in the house, even as they have come in obedience to your word, we ask, O oh Lord, that you open the windows of heaven, even unto them, that their rooms, they will not have enough room to occupy, in the name of Jesus. Bless their businesses, bless their finances, bless their career, O oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let's give rejoicingly. Hallelujah. Our Duke Baba, 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 our Duke
October and uh, is a day that we have set aside to be a blessing to the prophets of God we have in the house. So if you are seated here today, you have your we want you to package something wonderful for the servants of God in the house. And I pray for you today that your reward will not be delayed in Jesus' mighty name. You will not live an empty life in Jesus' mighty name. So if you have put something together, we want you to raise it above your head. Just raise it above your head. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for the privilege you give and we thank you for the understanding we have in giving. Lord of heaven, you said in your word that it's better to give than to receive. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray for this one today. As they have decided to voluntarily become a blessing to your servants in the house. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, bless them indeed in Jesus' mighty name. Bless their finances indeed in Jesus' mighty name. As you turn the life of Jabez around for good, I ask their businesses, their family, turn it around for good in Jesus' mighty name. Before the close of this month, this one we have a short testimony to tell financial wise in Jesus' mighty name. We give you praise, we give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Man, joyfully cast your seat. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. His name is Jesus. Jesus, 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 J-E-S-U-S, he's the king, he's the king of kings, he is the Lord of lords, his name is Jesus, 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 J-E-S-U-S, he's the king. He's the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. His name is Jesus, 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 Jesus. There He is. He is the King. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. His name is Jesus. 